There are lots of things all around us, exciting things that surround us. But how does it work? Do you know? How is it made? Do you know? Things that go up, things that go down, things that go pop, things that go round with special cameras to show you in. Maddie, and today I'm going for a drive in the car. Do you like going in the car? It's fun, isn't it? There are lots of fun things to see and look at in the car. As well as cars, there are buses, lorries and motorbikes signs on the roadside that tell us where to go. And my favourite part are the lights that change colour to tell you when to stop and when to go. Do you know what they're called? That's right, they're called traffic lights. But do you know how traffic lights work? Let's find out. How does it work? Traffic lights! Traffic lights are used to control traffic, like cars and buses at junctions. A junction is where two or more roads meet. Here, there's four roads that meet together and lots of different lanes, so it can get quite noisy. Traffic lights are important because they help traffic all travel in different directions through a junction safely. They do that by telling the traffic when to stop and when it's safe to go. Do you know what colour means stop? That's right, it's red. Can you see? The traffic light is red now. But what do you think happens next? It's changing colour. Look, the traffic light turned green. And green means that it's safe to go. And there, off goes the traffic. But did you notice another colour? That's right, in between the red and the green, there's an amber light. The amber light tells you to get ready to stop or get ready to go. So how do the traffic lights change to keep the traffic flowing so that all the cars can get to where they're going? Come with me. This is a traffic control centre, and it's where traffic lights are controlled and monitored in a city centre. Look at all of these screens showing roads and traffic lights and junctions. It's so busy and there are so many roads. Traffic lights are controlled by computers and the computer tells each traffic light how long it needs to be red, when to change to amber and how long it needs to be green. It's called the traffic lights cycle. But what is a traffic light cycle and how does it work? I think we need to take a closer look. At a junction, there is a set of traffic lights for each road. The roads coming from the left and right see a red light, so they have to wait. Traffic coming from the top and bottom roads see a green light at the same time. That means it's safe for them to go. The traffic can go straight ahead or can turn left. It can also turn right, but it has to wait until the traffic coming in the opposite direction has passed and it's safe to turn. Next, the lights on the roads going from the top to bottom turn amber, then red to make the traffic stop. Then the cars travelling on the road going across see red and amber, then turn to green, so it's their turn to go. They can now drive straight on, go left or wait to turn right. And the whole cycle starts again to keep the traffic flowing nicely all day long. Wow, it's really clever, isn't it? Shall we see how a junction works from up high? I've got my special steady camera, and a steady camera means that the picture will be smooth and steady even when I put the camera high in the air. <laughs> oh, that is so high! <laughs> Look at the junction. 
junction all the way down there. Can you see the traffic moving up and down the road? That's because their traffic light is on green. Ah, now look. The traffic going up and down has now stopped because their traffic light has turned red. So now it's the turn of the traffic going across the junction. That means their light has turned from red to red and amber and then green. Away they go. <laughs> that was brilliant. Now let's have a go at driving through the junction. First, I'm going to drive straight on across the junction. I've put a special camera on the front of the car so we can see more clearly. The lights have turned red, which means we need to stop. And now the lights are green, which means I can go ahead safely. This time, I'm going to turn left at the junction. The light is green, so I can go. OK, last go. Let's make a right turn. Remember, before turning right, I have to wait until there's no traffic coming from the opposite direction. Seeing how traffic lights work was really fun, wasn't it? What was your favourite part? Do you remember what the place is called where two roads meet? That's right, it's called a junction. Did you hear the sound of all the traffic at the junction? And did you see the amber light as the traffic lights changed from green to red? There are lots of different types of lights on roads though, aren't there? Can you think of any? What about headlights on a car like this? There are also street lights that help us to see when it gets dark and emergency warning lights on top of fire engines, ambulances and police cars. Emergency warning lights, like the ones on this police car, are really important because they tell people on the roads that the police might be travelling fast or are on their way to an emergency. When they're switched on, they flash really brightly, like that. But do you know how emergency warning lights are made? Let's find out. How is it made? Emergency lights. To make the lights for our police car, we have to come to a place like this. An emergency warning lights factory. Before emergency warning lights are made, they have to be designed using a computer program. Once the computer has the right design, it creates a list of parts needed to make the lights. And that gets sent to this, an electronic handset. And on the screen, it tells us where they're kept in this massive storeroom. So, what do we need? We need lots of little lights called LED lights. And these do all of the flashing. And then we need a circuit board and a circuit board controls when and how often the lights flash. And to connect the lights to the circuit board, we need lots of colourful cables. And then we're going to need some of these. These are called lenses. They act a little bit like a lid for the lights. And finally, to put everything together, we need lots and lots of screws. from a sheet of metal called aluminium. This is then put with all of the parts onto a mini train until it reaches the workstation. And this is where the emergency warning light is put together. And this is Mick. He's going to be making one for us today. First, Mick gets the base ready and starts to assemble the parts. Next, Mick screws all of the LED flashing lights into the right place using something called a pneumatic screwdriver. <laughs> Can you hear the sound of the pneumatic screwdriver? What do you think it sounds like? <laughs> I think it sounds angry. <laughs> 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 
It's time for Mick to wire all the LED lights, but there is a lot of wiring to be done and it can take a long time. So I'm going to use my special camera to film something called a time lapse. And that means when we watch this back, we can see things happening a lot quicker. There are 15 different cables to put in. I think they look a bit like colourful spaghetti. Wasn't that brilliant? Now all the cables are in place, it's time to plug in the circuit boards. A circuit board is like a mini computer and it sends a message to the LED lights to tell them when to flash. And they're connected <coughs> by these wires. <coughs> Mick has given me special permission to help him plug one of the wires in. We're nearly finished, just need to put the lenses on the top, like a lid. The last workstation is really important because it's where the emergency warning lights are tested to make sure they're working properly. Ready, Mick? Here we go. Look, they're working! Oh, they look great, don't they? What colours can you see? There's blue. Red. And white. Thank you. Right, let's get this fixed onto the top of our police car. The lights have to be screwed in place and then wired into the police car's electrics. In total, it takes about seven hours. And there you have it, a finished police car with brand new emergency warning lights. And I've got special permission to switch them on. Wow, looks like everything's working properly. Don't they look brilliant? I loved seeing how emergency warning lights are made from all those small parts. What was your favourite bit? Can you remember the name of the mini computer that controls the flashing lights? That's right, it's called a circuit board. Did you hear the buzzing sound the pneumatic <laughs> screwdriver made? <laughs> and did you see what colours the emergency lights were? They were blue, red and white. So, the next time you see emergency warning lights on a police car, you know how they were made. And when you see traffic lights on the road, you know how they work to keep the traffic safe. I'll see you next time. Bye! Woo! <laughs>